uh, serious uh, news that we want to make sure that we touch on. Uh, there's always and, and probably always will continue to be uh, developments in uh, city hall and uh, administration and government. Uh, the top administrator, uh, as we know, Ms. Uh, Rochelle Small Tony, is uh, going to meet with the city's middle management to completely address the low morale. I was at the meeting, um, Lisa, when Nexus Pruitt developed, uh, gave their findings. Yeah, right. Um, and they found no malfeasance, no wrongdoing on the part of Miss Small Tony or, or, or other. But they did say that if one negative thing came out of their report and their study, it was that some of that middle management felt completely unconnected uh -huh. um, and so they, they, they talked about that so it appears that Miss Small Tony is taking that uh, uh, advice and counsel to heart and is now uh, bringing in some of these mid-level managers to discuss the morale issues that are going on. But one thing I found from the Telegram's article a little not maybe odds not the right word mm -hmm. is that her assistant is the one that's picking the people to come. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a very fair statement to say that that is a little odd or strange. Um, yeah. Because and 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 I'm and, and and bear with me because I've been following this story very very closely and I've been there. The 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 faction of people that don't feel that this report is accurate or whatever, and and there's a lot of people that feel it is, mm -hmm. will point to something like that and say, well, if you're gonna pick who you talk to by one of your best friends, assistants, or whatever, you're probably going to pick the ones that will come in and say, well, I think everything's okay. I think that right. all of them should have been put, and it should have been by a draw. Mm -hmm. And I also um, read somewhere else where somebody thought that these things should be videoed, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and there should be other people uh, present. I just, I don't, I'm like what you said about picking. I don't, uh, well, I think it should be more random. I, I, I agree. I'll give you an example. Um, you know, so so basically, here's what it looks like, Miss Small Tony, and and I commend her for having this type of setting in this meeting. She's being proactive to something negative that came out of Nixon Pruitt's report. So I, I give her credit for that. I think that's a great thing. But to your point, I think in order to get the real scoop of how everyone feels about morale, you ha I, I agree. It should it should be a random. Process. People should be able to come in, I would think, come in freely. Mm -hmm. um, if, you know, if I have something to say, I should be able to be, and it very specifically says that they will be, you know, hand -picked. It's mandatory. And it will be mandatory. But like you said, that's not going to help the people that... You know, they're going to turn right around and say, well, if she gets to handpick who comes into this, then and that's what a lot of people were saying about the Nixon Pruitt report, is that the city, yes, granted we were glad they did it, but they gave them the questions they wanted them to answer mm -hmm. or, or, or ask. Yeah, so, I, I think I read that somewhere. Yeah, so um, that was a situation that some people were frustrated with. That being said, I do believe that uh, what she is doing here is important. I'm going to read this um, it says mid-level managers have stated they feel excluded and uninformed this is according to a flyer email to it doesn't say all employees it says to some Wednesday it was shared with the Rocky Mount telegram uh, by an employee that asked to remain anonymous now that that right there in and of itself is okay you know they, they, why didn't they want to be revealed well you know Maybe everybody doesn't. I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess. I mean, you don't want to attach your name with all this yeah. drama and, yeah. uh -huh. and and things like that. As you mentioned, uh, the attendees that come to this meeting will be able to discuss their concerns their priorities. Uh, the flyer also says managers are encouraged to have an open, honest conversation with the city manager only. Um, assistant city managers and department heads will not be in attendance. Mm -hmm. So this is this literally one-on-one. -on -one. This is literally a 
you're meeting with the city manager, you're meeting with Rochelle Small Tony, you have your opportunity to discuss your concerns, give your uh, opinion to her. Point. Nobody else hears it, nobody else is involved. Um, as you mentioned, um, Tanika Cooper, who is her executive assistant, will, it says, randomly select uh, people from the mid-level uh, manager, and if they are selected, that, that attendance is uh, mandatory. It does also say that department heads will be notified of who gets selected. Um, I mean, like I said, I, I think that this is a good thing. I, I hope that uh, Miss Small Tony, you know, brings these people in and, and hears their concerns and 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 takes them uh, seriously, and and uh, I will give her the benefit of the doubt to say that that's what she will do. Um, but I, I think, like you say, there that is a good point there. To why wouldn't you have a forum that allows anybody? to come in and, and, and share these type of, of concerns. I mean, because you, you would, if I'm a leader, I might not agree with you. I might say, well, you know, you don't understand why I do everything I do because you're not in my shoes. And that happens a lot. Right. Some people have a method to what I call their madness. Right. and They know what they're trying to get done, but in defense you need to include those people in what you're trying to get done and together as a group you'll get it done more effectively right right i, I think anytime you have uh, an open scenario where people can share their feelings and concerns it's it, i mean it's, it's productive and like you say you as the leader can sit there and say you know, I appreciate you. I, I'm, you know, we're probably not going to agree on everything, but maybe something that you say will help me see something in a different light, and we'll, I can make an, a necessary adjustment. But the person that is giving their concern has to go into it saying, "Look, I'm here to give my concern, but I, I might not change any." This person is in charge. This person is the boss. This person is who makes these decisions. So um, it will be it will be interesting to see what comes out of this and how it you know how it develops I told Sandra I think it was last week or week before all this Rocky Mount this low morale that mm -hmm. Rocky Mount this go to Google and type in just type in Rocky Mount and then after you do it all starts talking about you know it'll say something like city manager oh, really? or, or it'll say you know something even negative because I guess those type things have been searched so much and I thought what a bad black eye on Rocky Mount for everything that's happened for someone that's coming to look to come here you know when you start searching an area that you want to go because I tell you that is just a small fraction of what we have going on here with all the wonderful things we have and the people here mm -hmm. so you know how do you put that on Google <laughs> it's, it's frustrating and I think that's a good point and I've done you know I've done a little bit of homework and research you know about that very thing and I think what's what was frustrating about that is, you know, when 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 people see that, they do make their decisions. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, if if the very first thing that pops up is all these negative articles, then yeah, that's going to influence you. I I have reached out to, and I have studied on some other city governments and some other local areas, and I think it is safe to say that at the moment we have the most contentious situation of any any mm -hmm. any town within any reasonable amount of, of time from where we live. Mm -hmm. um, you know, mo and, and I'm not saying you're never going to find a city government situation where everybody agrees on everything. Mm -hmm. That's not what I'm saying. But ours is in uh, complete chaos at the moment and but it but it also Lisa depends on who you talk to. I had a great phone conversation with someone yesterday that you know was in complete support of everything that the council is doing. Uh, they said, you know what, the reason that the council is standing firm on there is because they believe in what they're doing. They they But you don't see that when you type in Rocky Mountain. That's what I'm getting at. We you don't see any the 
just just try it. Try okay. it today. Okay. You, you won't see somebody saying it's all negative. And, you know, we talked about social media and how negative some of these sites are. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you're talking about morale. Golly, if you read negativity all the time, you're going to be a negative person. That's true. I mean, it just, it just you almost can't help yourself, mm-hmm. right? I mean, if that's what you're, that's what you're hearing all of the time. So, um like I say, as always, there's there's people on both sides of this, but, yeah. but it is, yeah, that's an interesting thing that you brought up, but it is, it's, it's disturbing that if people were to Google Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, that the, everything that comes up is about this turmoil and chaos, yeah. but, uh, you know, uh, according, you know, and I've, I've talked to people that are, like I say, in full support of the council, and they say, look, the only reason this is an issue is because you've got a group of, of people that, that just will never be satisfied, and that we're all, you know, always out to, you know, and and, and I get that, uh, you know, people that, that, that feel like there's that mentality out there, so you got to respect how people feel. But, uh, but, you know, I will say from, you know, talking about both sides, mm-hmm. when you're going to spend, when you're starting to spend people's money, mm-hmm. people have a right to be upset when they Absolutely. have no specific voice. Absolutely. So that is really probably the biggest thing to me out of everything You know, because when you start talking about making people, uh, uh, well, I mean, ultimately people are going to have to pay more, and it affects your pocketbook, it affects your family, Mm -hmm. it affects what Mm -hmm. you do, how you do things, you know, you... You're going to get people riled up. Yeah, and and I, I talked to two different members of the council. This is a while back when this first started hitting the fan back in December and January, and both of the council members said, you know, it's very funny and interesting to me that, you know, prior to this, and then they basically just called out the citizens and saying, you know, nobody ever goes to council meetings. Nobody ever goes. And it, you know, now that this is out there, everybody and their dog wants to come to every meeting and follow every single detail. So, well, I think when when it, it all started, when uh, the excess of forty million dollars was mm-hmm, going to be spent, mm-hmm. and people had no specific voice on that, that is really to me, you know, because when when you talk about somebody's pocketbook and affecting their day to day, that gets people. It's personal. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and and I have. You know, you're spending my money. I have a right to have a say in it. Right. Absolutely. So, uh, but it was interesting. Their perspective was, you know, it's funny how nobody wanted to be involved until there was a little controversy, and so. And, and they basically said, you know, that's part of what some of the members on the council are struggling with in their relationship with looking at the citizens. And, and I was interested in the way they put it, and I, and I, I caught myself trying to understand what they were saying. Uh, you know, not that they were, you know, completely under, you know, valuing what was being said, but, you know, from their standpoint, it was like, you know, where were all these people the last five or six years when... You know all the you know. There's always issues going on, and so. But we have when when before the event center have we had a forty five million dollar right, issue? Right, and, and and that's what I tried to share with them, and I tried to help them understand. I said, look, you've got to understand from from the citizen side why they feel now is the time to to come out and and, and speak up, and and uh, it's it. I, it the, the scary part for me is you know you got a situation where obviously the council wants to defend their. Work. I get that. You know, yeah. you, you've put in your time. You're doing your service. You feel like you're doing the right thing. You want to defend that. And then you have a ground swelling of people coming up against you. It's very similar to what happened at Rocky Mount Prep, Lisa. Uh, Todd Pipkin resigning under, you know, the speculation is under the pressure of this parent group that was just giving him hell, for lack of a better term. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so... You, you look at scenarios like that, and and you know how do you how do you bring people together to, to work for some kind of common good? I don't know, but uh, we'll take a break. Continue this discussion. You're watching the live morning show presented by Don Bullock Chevrolet.
Any Day Special by coming into Ribeye Steakhouse in Nashville. Come on in and enjoy our legendary tender and juicy Omaha Angus ribeyes. And try and share our seafood entrees, your choice of shrimp, flounder, or oysters. And especially don't forget our famous salad bar with all your favorite fixings. If you want to give that someone special something revel in, Ribeye's gift certificates can be made to order. And as you're looking for somewhere to host a business meeting or special event, you can reserve the Angus room. Ribeye Steakhouse of Nashville, over 10 years of great food. Summer is so close, you can taste it, literally. Stop by Krispy Kreme today and try their limited time fruit-inspired donuts. Grab the perfectly tart key lime donuts, jam-packed strawberry donuts, and tropical pineapple donuts. A dozen fruit donuts are perfect for any sunny day. Dive into the flavor of summer and stop by your local Krispy Kreme today. 969 North Wesleyan Boulevard. Custom for the blazers, only for you at PJ's. Palm shoes, just for you. We're ready, we're ready with the shoes. Come and check us out at PJ's. Check out the loafers, just to go with our fitted pad. Only at PJ's Sportswear. I will follow the trend, I create the trend, I feed you the concept. We open every day, Monday through Sunday. You come down here and we will take care of you. Are you being bugged by gnats, mosquitoes, and biting flies? Well, we've got the solution. Bugs Away, all natural skin protection. It's safe, it's effective against bugs, and it's really good for your skin. Go to TwinOaksNC.com for all of We are back. Man, the show has flown by. Uh, yeah, I know. But that's because I talked the whole time. Uh, true that. No, yeah. I'm kidding. <laughs> That's <laughs> no, because I talked the whole time. So, uh, no, I really do. It's like I told Lisa when I came in. I, I, I do enjoy working with you on the show, and, and I genuinely wish we had more opportunity to, to team up. But uh, you said you had something you wanted to kind of share, and then I, I got something that was floating around social media yesterday in regards to the police department that I thought we'd, we'd bring up as well. But why don't you go ahead with that first? North Carolina's Republican-led House of Representatives failed to override a veto by the state's Democratic governor that kept a bill from becoming a law that would require our doctors to try to preserve the life of an infant born alive during an attempted abortion. Mm. According to the North, and nobody wants to talk about this, you know. Yeah. According to North Carolina uh, legislature's website, the House failed to override Governor Roy Cooper's veto of the Born Alive Abortion Survivors Protection Act in a 67 to 53 vote. To override the veto, lawmakers needed the approval of three-fifths of each chamber. The failed override effort in North Carolina is in contrast to a number of states with GOP-controlled legislatures that have passed restrictions measures on abortion. Georgia, Louisiana, Missouri, you've seen them all on um, television. Right. Last month, a federal judge blocked a Mississippi abortion law similar to those passed in other states. Each of those, Repu each of those states has both a Republican-led legislature and a Republican governor except mm. for Louisiana. Mm. Uh, it says right here, under the proposed North Carolina law, if a health care practitioner did not try to preserve the life of an infant born alive during an abortion attempt, they would be guilty of a Class D felony. Mm. The proposal says if anyone intentionally performs an overact that kills the baby, they would be charged guilty of murder. Mm. Gosh. Well, you can really go into a whole <laughs> other gamut if you want to talk about yeah. guilty of murder. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, it is, you know, this is just a personal thing for me, but it is hard to believe anyone could protest somewhere in support of abortion. I, I, it is hard. I understand there are certain things that happen, but I, other than that, it is hard for me to understand. I just, it's, it's disheartening. I mean, I agree. Um, you know, once again, you, uh, you know, you look at you know, people's mindsets and thoughts, but yes, I cannot imagine, mm -hmm. me personally, being in a situation where I would 
campaign and march for this being okay. I, I, you know, I, and I think what makes that is you mentioned you use the word disheartening is because you know I, it's almost like a very you know to me unless you know the mother's life is determined to be in complete danger uh, you know I, I, I have a hard time wrapping my mind this is me personally everybody's entitled to their opinion I have my, a hard time wrapping my mind around how it's ever justified mm. um, and, I, and I certainly regardless of what people's thought is I just cannot imagine a scenario where I'm legitimately protesting that it is oh you know what I'm that to me is a very dis I mean, it you know, is. it's just harsh. It's, it's, it uh, is. Nobody ever wants to talk. You don't. I feel like you don't ever hear this side. You always hear the side of the people, which that's what makes good TV, I guess, mm -hmm. is of the people protesting of, you know, the women's rights and, you know, think about that infant's right. And right. That infant didn't have a, a right when that woman chose to have an act to create the infant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, that's right. That's right. And, and it's, it's very, very, very hard uh, to, to fathom where in my opinion some people's mindset goes with that I, I, I don't I don't understand that um, but I, I would agree with you that the, the protesting part of that is, is harsh to me which is very very harsh um, but anyway we'll, we'll see how that goes and, and, and how we how we follow that Is anything else you want to add mm -hmm. okay just making sure I didn't um, cut you off there um, the Rocky Mount police chief uh, chief Robinson uh, there were some rumors, and I even got this text from two people yesterday asking me if, if, if this was true. And that's why you have to be very, very careful about what you... Well, that's what we were just talking about, social media, how right. it just it goes just crazy. Yeah, and here's an example of why you got to be really, really delicate and careful with what you read uh, and, and even put out there on right. social media. Exactly. It was bouncing around social media yesterday that the Rocky Mount Police Department was short. Uh, 25 officers and that the chief is getting ready to resign. That he's disgusted and frustrated. Um, that was, like I say, going around different inboxes. People were texting. It was all over social media. I got two people that texted me directly and said, is this true? What have you heard? Um, I want to read Chief Robinson's response. It was bad. He had to make a response. Yeah, exactly. So, um, and, 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 and I'll get to that in just a second of, of, of why I'm glad that he did it. His response is, neither statement is true. We are presently hiring. I am running an academy now as of this text. We are nowhere near that short of officers. However, I am not fully staffed if you know of any potential candidates, please direct them to uh, Rick Miller uh, or to his office. Uh, so that is the statement that he put out. And see, that right there, uh, Lisa, because <laughs> I was with her the other day, um, that right there shows you the danger of social, social media. media right there because somebody probably heard, yeah, they're hiring. You know, so they go tell somebody, oh, the police department's hiring. Uh, the police department's having an academy to teach people about the rigors of police. And, you know, so I go tell you, you hear it, and you go tell somebody, they hear it, and by the time five people have been told the story, now they're 25 people short and the chief's leaving. Yeah, well, I, I just think... Why don't these people have a job? I don't have time to talk about all of that. All no, right. Social media, do you? No, no. I, I, I don't. Um, I mean, I just don't understand. What do all these people do that create all this stuff? Yeah. Is some of it on purpose? You know, people, people will ask me, and I'll say this publicly, there's tons of folks that, you know, with all this going on in the city, mm -hmm. um, have created all these social media and, and people ask me well don't you read and I, to be honest with you I don't mm -hmm. um, one I don't 
have the time to get you know in the back and forth right uh, on Facebook and chat rooms and Me stuff. I, I don't have time. Don't really want to make that. That doesn't mean I don't care about what's going on. But yeah. I, I've never, I've personally never found that, chat rooms and social media forums to be very productive. Uh, it's not an effective way I, to handle anything. Right. I don't. <laughs> I don't see the point in lashing out my opinion mm -hmm. in a setting where people are so emotionally charged. Uh, you got it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, why, why, why would I do that? Your uh, chat rooms and you know, social media sites to me are just havens for high-level angst. Yeah. And I just don't believe that anything productive comes out of going back and forth on social media. Mm -hmm. um, I would prefer to have a open and honest discussion with someone face to face or with a group of folks. You know, you put those things. I, and 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 I'm not even just talking about stuff with the city. I mean, this is this is drama in families. You look at Facebook. Oh my gosh, why do people do that? Oh my gosh, I mean, really, like me and me and uh, Johnny got in a huge fight, and then there's a. 80 comment thread about their 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 personal stuff and yeah. I'm like really I don't think you if you have beef with somebody just talk to them mm -hmm. if you have a problem with something that's happened to you talk to the person that you have the problem with you're yeah. not going to solve it by everyone else interjecting all exactly. their opinions it just like, literally creates that snowball effect. right and I think the worst the worst thing is when people start talking politics on these things that is I, I don't I mean I don't know how people stomach even getting involved in political discussions on I just you know and then people will you know constantly throw out their opinion almost like they're cramming it down you know what I'm saying what I mean it's like Okay, we get it. You're a Republican. We get it. You love Donald Trump. Uh, you know, come on. Uh, I, you know, why why shove that down someone's throat? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't get it. But anyway, that, I wanted to share that because, like you say, it's just a situation where you just, A... You know, if you hear something like that, don't, I mean, good gosh, don't don't put that on social media, people. I mean, that just, once again, to me, the chief having to respond to that was, was unnecessary. He shouldn't have even had to respond to that uh, just because they are hiring and he is having an academy does not warrant a mass panic in the police department and, and, and say that he is leaving. Well, you talk about the... Um city with the Facebook, there was something posted from the police department on the their Facebook page a week or so ago in relation, talking back with about that video of that child, you know what I'm talking about? Did you see a video of the child that, um, I'm, I'm going to go back, we're going to go to break okay, and I'm going to talk about it because several people commented who runs their Facebook page because of okay. what was said, so right, I'll well, see if I can't find it. Well, why don't we go ahead, uh, i tell you what, I'll read our, our ad that'll segue us into our final break, I'll come back and do weather, and then that'll give you the opportunity to find that, sounds like a, a great thing to discuss. Okay. You got it? Yeah. Uh, the weather is, is getting hot, but the pool is cool at Stone Park. After School. They are a five-star North Carolina licensed local facility in Rocky Mount. They're located at 1261 South Winston Avenue. They offer a fun field summer program perfect for your child, your schedule, and most importantly, your budget. Stone Park has hourly, daily, and weekly rates. They're busy planning field trips, healthy activities, skating, putt-putt, and they have the only on-site pool for the daycares around here. So StonePartChildCare.com is a website you can go to. They have been serving the Rocky Mount area for over over 30 years through their location at 1261 Winston Avenue and 513 Old Mill Road, which specifically serves kids from six weeks to pre-K. So give your child the advantage that teachers look for, advanced learning skills due to a great daycare environment teaching setting. Now, this was a couple weeks ago. You want to set the tone this for that? This was some we'll sort of it. video um, about a child um, uh, 
it was at school. Gosh, if somebody knows about the video, because Sandra said she saw it. It was shared like over 2,000 times. I can't believe you didn't see it. But the police department said, please, and this is true to what we were just talking about, please take the time to understand the ramifications of sharing videos or spreading things that are not factual. You create hostility towards people, and it creates problems for all involved. Everything you see and hear on social media is not always, and it says period, spoiler alert, true. Right, right. But I mean, that's right. Um, Glad you don't remember what the video was about? It was... Um, no, I don't. It, it, I just remember thinking, you know, talking about who runs their Facebook page because mm -hmm. they're having the cons. They're, right. they're getting up there and... Well, and, and I'm glad that you mentioned that, and I think it's important for us to put that out there, you know, for and, and we're, we'll plead with you as members of our viewing audience, don't do stuff like that. You know, I mean, if you, even if you, even if you think it might be really true, or you feel like you've got good sources, uh, you know, let, let the truth come out. I mean, just don't spread things that just because you heard somebody say it. I mean, my gosh, I can, I can. I mean, if, if I came on this show, Lisa, and said everything that I have heard or somebody told me they think they know, good gosh, I could turn this whole place upside down. Uh, but, you know, it, it, the, the point being... It's not productive. It's it, it's not productive, and, and like I say, the chat room thing. I'll I just I don't get what people get out of going back and forth in those. But uh, um, anyway, you know, everybody has their different opinion and 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 and, and how they feel. And uh, we'll take this quick call here this morning. Good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Camilla Dancy. Hey, sir. You know, um, what tickles me is you all say you don't look at Facebook, you're not on social media. But that's the problem. You know, this show is no different than Facebook or social media. You're here trying to talk about things, you don't know what you're talking about. The video was about a two white students at the school, I forget what school it let, let me interrupt you real quick. Uh, hey, wait, 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 I'm going to interrupt you. I specifically. Hey, let me let me let me tell you. I specifically said I didn't know what the video was about. I went to the school, came on my page because I asked the question. Well, on that page, I asked the question. What happened? Because everybody was talking all about it. The guy, the young student in school, told what happened. And what the police department was saying was, don't get up here and talk about things, create a hostile environment where you don't know the whole story. Right. And that's exactly what I read. So maybe you were listening to another show because that's exactly no, what no, I read. No, no, I'm not listening to another show. You said you read a statement, but you, you can't tell what the video was about. You need to be able to tell the whole story. Well... Evidently, you haven't been listening to our whole show because oh, prior they, to that... Oh, they listened to it. They listened to it ever since you came on. Matter of fact, I had my phone in the bathroom thinking of y'all. Y'all wouldn't listen to it. Well, I have been listening. Well, thanks. We appreciate that. Yeah, but like I said, we, yeah, like I said, we, yeah, like I said, you... Whoa, we're not going to listen to that this morning. But I do appreciate you watching the show. And if you were listening to us, you would have heard that we were talking about people talking on social media. And even the police department has to do that. All so. right. And with that, we will take our final break. When we come back, uh, we will get our final look at the weather. And I'll close out the show. You're watching the live morning show presented by Don Bullock Chevrolet. And welcome back to the live morning show presented by Don Bullock Chevrolet. Um, and do we want to do the weather this last? Say, don't we do weather now? Um, I'll give her just a second to get the graphic, but it is, uh, we need to do the weather one last time and kind of get that forecast in, uh, which appears to be a little bit on the, the potential damp side. Um, so, Ann, if you want to roll that graphic, and I'll kind of go over the forecast one last time. Rolling. <laughs> she said rolling. Uh, <laughs> this edition of the live morning show show weather is brought to you by Fred's Food Club, the home of rock bottom prices. We accept cash, credit, debit, and EBT cards with three locations to serve you in Rocky Mount, Wilson, and Greenville. Locally owned and operated by Adams Wholesale Company for over 75 years. All right. 
right, and welcome into the forecast here. We'll give you one last look, and as you can see, the temperature continues to climb. We started out at 72, now we're up to 75. Uh, current condition, the dew point 71. The humidity has actually dropped a little bit. It's getting less humid, Lisa. Yeah, you'll, you'll take that, won't you? Uh, humidity at 89%. Winds southwest at 8. Barometer 29.87 inches. So let's look at the five-day forecast. I know that for, uh, for today, it is going to be mostly sunny skies, but some rolling uh, clouds rolling through, uh, some uh, good potential of, of thunderstorms uh, activity uh, later today and tonight. High of 90 degrees today. Now those storms will bring in a little bit of a cool front, and Fred kind of had his map out yesterday and explained, you know, where that uh, that cool trend's coming from. He'll have his maps and be back in the saddle tomorrow for you. Uh, the cool front drops tomorrow's temperature from 90 degrees today down to 79 for a high tomorrow. Uh, once again, a good opportunity for thunderstorms tomorrow. Uh, from what I remember Fred saying and from what I'm hearing, your greatest chance of the most amount of rain and storm will be Saturday and into Sunday. Uh, Saturday's high 79 degrees, low of 68, and then Sunday it is 81 and a low of 70. And once again, pretty much uh, from Friday to Monday, pretty much the same forecast, 81 for a high on Monday and a low of 70 degrees. So good idea. Uh, I wouldn't say completely cancel all your outdoor plans for the next few days, but Move but, I, <laughs> but I would certainly have an umbrella handy, uh, particularly on Saturday and into Sunday. So there's a look at your five-day forecast and your WHIG TV weather right up to the minute. All right. So I want to say we love to take anyone's calls, but not when you're screaming. It's not whatever you're saying is not effective if you're screaming. Right. So, uh, you know, we want to take your calls, but uh, you have to do it in a non-emotional way. Yep, I totally understand that. So we've got uh, about five or six minutes left, Lisa, as we wrap things up here uh, on the live morning show presented by Don Bullock Chevrolet. Uh, a couple of community announcements we'll get to, but there's one other, um, one other thing here in the paper I thought was at least worth mentioning, but uh, we do have a call. Uh, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, boys and girls. How are y'all doing? Hey, good. Good morning. I hope you are. We are indeed. I think it's, it, we're past time for a change with this Rocky Mount leadership. We've been in turmoil from day one with these people that are uh, calling themselves leaders. Um, I, um, you don't have this kind of a conflict when things are done above board and with the involvement of the city of Rocky Mountain citizens. When we have these closed door, secretive, uh, extravagant spending um, meetings with no one else involved but maybe the, the happy five or whoever they are there that's making the decisions, the rest of the city, the ones that actually pay the bills, the ones that the money actually belongs to, should have been involved from day one. If I had a, a next door neighbor come in and wipe out my, my checking account, they spent a hundred thousand dollars of my money and didn't ask me and then told me later on that they spent it on some foolish crap that I don't agree with to start with and I knew was a bad investment and then um <laughs> and then try to laugh it off or brush it off and saying that well you're the you're the one that elected us. Uh, that just uh, sends up the wrong um the wrong message. Yeah, and, and I think to your point that you certainly uh, share the sentiments of a lot of people that I've spoken with and saying, you know, I feel like I have every right to, you know, to question. I think what, what has bothered a lot of people is that the questions that they have and the concerns that they have and, and their opinion aren't being met with um, uh, a charitable uh, a response. They're either not getting responded to at all, or it's like a you know. Well, why would something like that bother you? You know, we you know. I, I've heard from people. And I've also heard from people that say that certain council members have been very open to their claims and and their feedback. But I I, I do agree with you that you know citizens certainly have the right to when their money is being spent to to question whatever they and and expect a respectful uh, response to whatever their concern may be. Absolutely, and also the um, I've spoken with more 
uh, of the city of Rocky Mount employees, and what they're saying, only a few here and there are the ones that are disgruntled. There are many, many that won't speak um, on the record because they're, uh, they know their job is at, uh, is at stake if they open their mouth. Mm -hmm. uh, when you have such low morale, there's no way possible to ever get it back without a uh, change in, in management or a, a change in the leadership of Rocky Mount. Mm. And my last little comment here, having that Louis Farrakhan Jr. call into your show here as a known racist, a known bigot, uh, there's no reason to ever, ever allow him airtime on this on this station again. That really is fancy. It's a known racist, a known bigot, and a known agitator. Um, it just, it, it pulled my blood to even hear his voice on TV knowing what kind of a racist and a Louis Farrakhan follower that, that he is, thinking that other people are going to get on there and agree with him. It's just, uh, it just curdled my blood to even hear those type of racist people allowed uh, airtime on your station there. But perhaps in the future we can uh, block his number. We don't need to have racist and bigots like that um, spout their hate and their and their view of the world. If they have a problem, they'll be out here sooner or later. They can uh, make amends for the maker, but not with the city of Rocky Mountain. We don't need that kind of priceless rhetoric uh, aired on TV. But Y'all are doing such a great job. It's so good to hear from you, and keep up the good work. Thanks. Thank Have you very a good much. Weekend. I appreciate your call. Appreciate your thoughts and your opinion. Uh, 407 11, 11 If anybody wants to sneak in a, uh, a last-second phone call, they're more than, more than able to do that. Um, there was one other headline here. Um, one other headline here um, about a, a train derailment. Yeah, where was that? Uh, it occurred on the southeast side of Nashville uh, earlier in the week, uh, prompting a, a, a town council member to express communications and safety-related concerns to the town's top uh, firefighting official. Uh, Fire Chief Chris Joyner uh, said a locomotive uh, was hauling crack corn when the incident happened at 2.30 Monday east of the North Carolina 58 vehicle crossing. Uh, first reports from the radio dispatch, there was a brush fire in the area of Jackson Way and Old Wilson Road. Subsequent reports said the fire was in the area of Jackson Way and the railroad track. But, uh, it says that uh, news of the incident came up near the end of Tuesday's town council meeting when Councilwoman uh, Louise Hinton asked Joyner, who was in the audience, whether what happened was serious. And that prompted a discussion of how... Uh, unsafe, and he actually used the word, uh, she actually used the word pathetic, mm. that the rail lines and the safety were. So that situation has come up uh, and, and, you know, it's, it, with, with that... Um, and it happened, it like happened Monday. Monday. It, ha it happened on Monday. And uh, so she, obviously that is a, a situation that will be addressed uh, with the leadership in Asheville uh, moving forward. Just a couple of quick uh, community announcements because we got to go off the air in about a minute. Um, the uh, Southside Baptist Church is hosting a auction uh, this Saturday at two. Coins, exercise, furniture, home decor, lawn and garden, music instruments, automotive parts, tools and equipment. Sounds like a yard sale. Uh, yeah, uh, you just come out there and bid on yeah. whatever you want to uh -huh. bid on. Uh, that is coming up. Uh, they always have good things at that church. They had a car show, mm -hmm. you know, a couple mm -hmm. months ago. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh -huh. Had a great turnout for that. Yeah. Food. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Ash County Rick and Senior Services having a, uh, a, a British Challenger International Soccer Camp. That is coming up June 24th to the 28th. Uh, you can go to challengersports.com for that. And then don't forget... Um, North Carolina Wesleyan is hosting a plethora of athletic camps and clinics. Uh, the John Thompson basketball camp is going on right now, but they're having another one next week from June 10th to the 14th. Your children do that? They do. My boys will be going to the next, yeah, to that they one. They ever go to Duke? Does Duke have a, like Carolina used to have? A... They've never been, they've never been to, to the Duke one um, before. But, uh, um, I, I know that they're going to go to this one. Um, 
they got a girls camp, they got a soccer camp, they got a softball camp, a volleyball camp, and a cross country camp. So you can go to North Carolina Westland Athletics webpage, get the specific dates and the brochures. But if you know if you got a kid that's looking for something athletic to do, you know Westland's got plenty of camps for them to, to go participate in. So. Well, I know we're getting ready to go off the air, but give me what your quick thoughts of Coach K's grandson being a walk on on Duke. No, I man, that's cool. I mean, I, yeah, you know, some will say, well. Well, you know, whatever, you know, preferential treatment. For sure. I, you know, why not? Has he not earned the right to let his grandson sit on the end of the bench? He's not going to play. He's not going to get a, a, a scholarship. He's not going to take a scholarship from somebody. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm not he, he can't be terrible. I mean, he grows, he's grown up around basketball his whole life, so he's got to have some skill. But, I mean, it's not, not like... Not necessarily. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess that's true. That's true. But, uh, uh, it's just, I guess it's just a... Uh, if he wants to do it, I think Coach K has earned the right to pretty much do whatever he wants to do. Okay, coming from a Duke fan. Right. Somebody else will have a different opinion, and they could gladly share it. So. Well, we appreciate you joining us today. Hope you have a nice, rainy, sorry weekend. That's it's Fred's fault since he's not here. Definitely want to have the umbrella handy for sure. So You've been watching the live morning show presented, as always, by Don Bullock Chevrolet. Lisa, hope we get to do this again soon. Make it a great Thursday, everyone. Me too, Wayne. Thank mm-hmm. you.